When I was an undergraduate student at the University of Oklahoma, I took a course titled The History of Racism. And I remember this class very specifically because the first question we were asked was to think about the first time we interacted with our own race. This question was kind of tough for me because for me, as an Arab American person, I had often thought about my race as being white, but I also grew up being told, oh no, you're Lebanese. And that was difficult because I wasn't really sure what my race was or how I had interacted with it as a person. So I had to think to my family, okay? So here's some pictures of my family, uh, a beautiful picture of me and my grandmother after I graduated college, uh, some of my, me and my brothers, and my other siblings and my mom and dad. And it was important for me to think about family because for Arab people, family is an important part of our culture. So I started to think about that and how I interacted with it and what it meant to be Arab or what it meant to be growing up Arab. And I started to think about a specific moment. It was September 11, 2001. Because I remember I was seven years old and I got sent home from elementary school that day. Everyone did. And I remember getting home and not really understanding why I had to go home. You know, I was seven years old. I was like, what's going on? I went to my mom and my mom and I talked about what was going on. And it was really interesting for me to process because my mom said some really bad things have happened and some of the people who did it look like us. And I really thought about that. And so the next day I went to school as a seven year old does and I went back to elementary school and I remember talking to some of my classmates and having this first moment where one of my classmates said, Jerry, are you a terrorist? And that was interesting for me because I'm seven and I don't know what that means really. Uh, so let's flash back forward. So I'm in this history of racism class and I said, okay, that's it. That's the moment I want to talk about. So I get up in front of my class and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, growing up and September 11th was really important and I really thought about my identity and what it meant to be Arab and all of these things. And my professor, he looked at me and he said, Jerry, why not just be white? When he asked me that question, I don't think I had a good answer for him at first. I remember thinking, uh, I guess he's right. It would be easier if I just pretended to be white. I don't have to tell people, I could just pass. And I walked out of class that day still thinking that because I, I didn't know what to think. And that led me towards a journey of really self-discovery. I was a senior in college and I really didn't understand my identity. I didn't understand what it meant to be Arab. So I, I really focused on that and I realized I had to understand myself before I could ever help other people. I went on to receive a bachelor's degree in human relations from the University of Oklahoma and later a master's degree in adult and higher education. And that was spectacular because it allowed me the opportunity and time to really think about what it meant to be Arab and what it meant to be uh, who I was. So just to kind of give you an overview, I want to talk a little about what it means to be Arab. Some of you might be questioning or thinking about that now. So these are the 22 countries that Arab people might track their uh, ancestry, their roots back to uh, Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, some of those countries, right? And so when we think about that, there's a bit of a discrepancy. Some people from these countries might not even say they're Arab American or really understand Arab identity as a whole, but instead might say, oh, I'm Lebanese. And like I had that experience as well. I was told often when I was young, oh, you're Lebanese. I didn't really know what it meant to be Arab as a whole or what Arab countries had as a culture. So as I grew up, I really wanted to think about that. I wanted to think about what our cultures were, what our identities were. And I wondered, why is it so hard to have those conversations here in the United States? What's, what's causing us to talk about being Arab American? And I realized it's because there's a bit of an erasure happening with individuals of Arab American identity, not being told that they're Arab. Like I said, I was often told to mark white on the test that I was taking or being told that I was white. The United States Census Bureau estimates about 1.9 million people in the United States uh, consider themselves Arab American. But the Arab American Institute questions that number, saying it's much closer to 3.6 million. That's almost double. That's the census erasing about half of the population of Arab people uh, with just one number. That was really difficult to process when I started thinking about it. So it led me to think, okay, what is unique about Arab culture? What do we do? And I go back to that point of family. I go back to the point of history. I go back to the point of culture because when Arab people became an immigration to the United States, they really had to bring that with them. They had to really think about it. But modern practice lumps Arab American identity into white identity. 
But I believe that unique culture is going to demand unique support. And what I mean by that is when we think about a higher education context like the Ohio State University or higher education around the nation, we have to really think about what it means to have identity development. Oftentimes universities are employing people to have these conversations, to have talks about what it means to be a person of color at a university or in higher education today. But are we talking about all of the identities present or that are salient in our communities? So studies have shown that a predominantly white institution like The Ohio State University, oftentimes students of color are not receiving an appropriate amount of resources to support their development at an educational institution like this. So they've identified kind of four categories uh, when you look at the studies that say we must work to provide these resources or to help provide this for students of color. So these are mentorship, community, personal investment, and involvement. And I'll give you a kind of a brief overview here because the expectation here is that most white students, white identified students, who are attending a predominantly white institution are going to receive a majority of these categories innately. That's an expectation of their experience at a university. They might go into a classroom, have a conversation with a professor, realize that they have the same identities, and then build a mentorship relationship, right? They might have community because a majority of the people around them look like they do. They might have that personal investment that's been bred into them since they were very young, being told they have to graduate college. Um, and then when it comes to involvement, you might think, uh, well, what does that mean? Well, it's because most of the organizations that exist at a university are already, at a predominantly white institution, are already white. So for students of color, we have to work effectively. We have to work hard to bridge that gap. When you have a student of color at a university, we have to help provide mentorship opportunities and community and investment and involvement. But for Arab American students, since we're being lumped into white identity, from the get-go, we're told that it's an innate experience. But if we look at modern America, if we look at the way that xenophobia and prejudice impacts the Arab American communities following events like 9-11, are we really getting these experiences innately? And I'm sure that begs the question, what's the difference between race and ethnicity, or how do we notify, like, how do we see that? One is that race often is something that can be identified when someone walks by. That's how we see race or how race has been theorized. While ethnicity is something you might draw back to your ancestry, your roots, your culture, right? So for most people, they might say, well, Arab American is just an ethnicity. This is just something that, uh, you know, they're just tracking their culture or their history. But we also have to think about, can an Arab American person go to the airport and not have prejudice put against them? Can they walk down our campus here at The Ohio State University and not be identified? Um, maybe they might be wearing religious garb. Is that going to yield prejudice? So do we need to start thinking about Arab American identity development in the same ways we think about race and uh, critical race theory? So, I think to an incident that occurred here at The Ohio State University. It happened back in 2016, and a young Muslim man uh, jumped out of a car and enacted an act of terrorism. Something that I think that all of us, can, we don't condone, and, and we want to say that Arab people don't condone those actions of extremism. But we have to look to that because as it's, the research was done following that incident, a lot of the feelings came from being othered and feeling out of place at The Ohio State. Arab American students are white when it benefits whiteness, yet they are othered also when it benefits whiteness. And what I mean by that is that when I do something well, when another Arab American student does something well, it's going to be included in the totals and the subtotals of whiteness. But when we are terrorists, when extremism occurs, we are instantly othered and looked at as if we are separate from that group. So when I think back to the question that my professor asked me all those years ago, he looked at me and he said, why not just be white? I think that I've started to develop an answer for him. So when I think about why I can't just be white when I enter a space, it's because if I did, I would be taking it upon myself to erase my culture, to erase my history, to erase my identity, to erase in myself, to erase the work that my great-grandparents and grandparents did to get me to this place right now. So if I had that conversation again, if I could talk to my professor, I would say, don't erase me. Thank you.